I don't think Donald Trump's a good person. I'd even go so far as to say he's a bad person. Now, in my defense, I'm only basing that on everything I've ever been taught about what makes someone good or bad. <laughs> That's it. That's the only thing I'm basing on. But you know, and, and this is real, and this is something I accept. Half the country thinks he's a good person, or they don't care that he's not because they think he's a good president. And because of that, he's going to be our president again. That's how democracy... After Donald Trump won the 2024 presidential election, late-night hosts had plenty to say on their shows. Jimmy Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, Seth Meyers, Jimmy Fallon, and Jon Stewart each shared their reactions, bringing their unique takes and humor to the news. It's fascinating to see how each of them approached Trump's win. Let's take a look at some of these clips, starting with Seth Meyers, who broke down Trump's victory speech from Florida and pointed out a few moments that didn't seem to add up. The story, I told it last night. I had a man on the phone. I had the screen muted, no sound. I was talking to a very important man, happens to be here, and that very important guy, one of the most important people in, I would say, the country, actually. But, you know... I was president, and now it looks like I was going to be maybe president again, so I figured I could ask him to hold. So I asked him to hold, and because, especially because you're going to be president again, they hold. So I took the phone down, and I'm looking at the screen. I'm seeing this crazy thing that's going around and coming down. It looks like it's going to crash into the gantry, and I said, oh, no. And I said, do me a favor. Do you mind holding for a couple of minutes? I want to see this. I thought it was a space-age movie or something. Yeah, no, let's give him the nuclear codes, you know? <laughs> Why, you know, sorry, you thought you were watching a space... What does that even mean? I saw the rocket going up, and then I saw the large black monolith and the monkeys throwing the bone up in the air, and then... <laughs> there was a baby floating in space, and this wasn't that long ago. This all happened in 2001. I don't think Donald Trump's a good person. I'd even go so far as to say he's a bad person. Now, in my defense, I'm only basing that on everything I've ever been taught about what makes someone good or bad. <laughs> That's it. That's the only thing I'm basing on. But, you know, and, and this is real, and this is something I accept. Half the country thinks he's a good person, or they don't care that he's not because they think he's a good president. Next, Jon Stewart offered a message of hope, urging viewers to keep fighting and not see this as the end. What is this? <laughs> but this isn't the end. I promise you, this is not the end. And we have to regroup, and we have to uh, uh, continue to fight and continue to work day in and day out to create the better society for our children, for this world, for this country, uh, that we know is possible. We know it's possible. Meanwhile, Stephen Colbert addressed Trump's victory, telling the audience that despite jokes about getting more material from a second Trump term, he actually wishes it hadn't turned out this way late night host people often say to me come on part of you has got to want trump to win because he gives you so much material to work with no no <laughs> no one tells the guy who cleans the bathroom wow you must love it when someone has explosive <laughs> diarrhea there's so much material for you to work with <laughs> now you understand that that good i wish you wish so many of us wish this hadn't happened but that is not for us to decide this is a democracy. That's democracy with a capital, duh. <laughs> and in this democracy, the majority has spoken, and they said they don't care that much about democracy. <laughs> and I want to take a moment to congratulate Kamala Harris on Tim Walls on running an amazing 107-day campaign. You know, come on. That was extraordinary. Right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They hit it right out of the gate. Firstly, I hope they stay in touch. I know they're really good at texting. <laughs> as, as we're all about to uh, plunge back into the Trump hole, here's what occurs to me. The first time Donald Trump was elected, he started as a joke and ended as a tragedy. This time he starts as a tragedy. Who knows what he'll end as? A limerick? <laughs> there once was a man who was orange. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> who knows what the next four years are going to be like? What we do know is that we're gonna be governed by a monstrous child surrounded by cowards and grifters. And my brain keeps pumping out an unlimited supply of ramifications. It's really hard to see a bright side here. So far, all I've got is his inaugural address. Because while it's gonna kick his administration off to a terrible start, at least we know the mic stand's gonna get a happy ending. <laughs>
Jimmy Kimmel got choked up during his Wednesday night night monologue, sharing how election night felt like a terrible experience for him. Terrible night last night. It was a terrible night for women, for children, for the hundreds of thousands of, of hardworking immigrants who make this country go, um, <laughs> for health care, for our climate, for science, for journalism, for justice, for free speech. It was a terrible night for poor people, for the middle class, for seniors who rely on Social Security, for our allies in Ukraine, for NATO, for the truth, and democracy and decency. And it was a terrible night for everyone who voted against him. And guess what? It was a bad night for everyone who voted for him, too. You just don't realize it yet. And, and most of all, most of all, it was an absolute disaster of a night for Melania. <laughs> but it was a really good night for Putin and for polio and for lovable billionaires like Elon Musk and the bros up in Silicon Valley and all the wriggling brainworms who sold what was left of their souls to bow down to Donald Trump. But you know what? I'm going to say something that Trump would never say unless it favored him. The people voted, and this is the choice we made. If you're enjoying this, don't forget to like and subscribe. In January, Donald Trump becomes president, and that's that. He won. Doesn't mean we give up, but it also doesn't mean we storm the Capitol because we don't like the result. And, you know, trying, I know a lot of people don't want to hear anything positive. I've been trying to come up with something positive. The best I can come up with is we've been through this once before. And yes, this time it is probably going to be worse, maybe a lot worse. But I also think that maybe we will look back and realize that in the long run, this is what we needed to wake us up. Maybe the people who care so much about him need to find out how little he cares about them. Now, all the, all the, the promises he makes about stopping wars and imposing tariffs, how he's going to crush inflation and cut taxes, now he has to do this stuff. And I hope he does. I really do. I hope his next unpredictable act is to reach across the aisle and do something positive. He really does. The bar's low. He has an opportunity to win us over. <laughs> Remember when he took office the first time he started working on infrastructure with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi until the other Republicans say, hey, hey, we don't do that. We don't work together. Maybe this time he'll shock us and actually do some productive things. He won't, probably, but he could. <laughs> Or maybe the only good part of all this is he can't run again in 2028. I don't know. Maybe, maybe next time... Maybe next time the Republicans will nominate an orangutan for president. <laughs> Why not? At least make it fun. My only request to President-elect Trump is that he let me share a prison cell with Taylor Swift. I'm really good at making bracelets, and I think we'd get along just fine. Well, Lastly... Jimmy Fallon joked during his Wednesday night monologue that Trump's win felt like America getting back together with their crazy ex. As last night, America decided to get back with a crazy ex and elect Donald Trump as the 47th president of the United States. Uh, no matter who you voted for, I think all Americans can agree it's going to be a rough Thanksgiving. I, really, right? <laughs> yep, Trump returning to the White House is a huge historic comeback for someone who literally never went away. Of course, Trump's already super busy. First, he's got to move all those classified documents back into the White House. <laughs> yeah, Republicans were thrilled about last night until they realized it's going to be four more years of Melania's Christmas decorations. <gasps> Red Rob. <laughs> it was a tough night for Democrats. Today, they turned to Elon Musk. Like, so tell me more about living on Mars. How close are we? <laughs> yeah, the election wasn't really close. It was a big night for Donald Trump and a bigger night for Don Julio. That's right, 51% of the country is really happy, 47% are really hungover, and one, <laughs> one guy is both. And, you know, uh... <laughs> Trump won last night in pretty convincing fashion, securing the Electoral College and the popular vote, which means for the first time ever, he'll accept the results of an election. And that wraps up our look at how late-night hosts reacted to Donald Trump's 2024 election win. From emotional reflections to sharp humor, each host brought their own take on the surprising outcome. Let us know in the comments which reaction stood out to you the most. And if you enjoyed this roundup, don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching.